and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. The two secrets that Jesus revealed to only Mary Magdalene. It is clear from the Bible that Jesus Christ had 12 dedicated and committed followers, otherwise known as the 12 disciples. Simon Peter, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, James, son of Zebedee, John, James's brother, Philip, Bartholomew, also known as Nathaniel, Matthew, also known as Levi, Thomas, also known as Didymus, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, also known as Lebius or Judas, not to be confused with Judas Iscariot, Simon the Zealot, also called Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who famously betrayed Jesus. These are among the most prominent disciples of Jesus who were with him during his earthly ministry. But there is one name that is conspicuously missing from this list, and that is Mary Magdalene, also known as Mariam of Magdalene. Touch me. Given the supportive role she played in the ministry of Jesus, we can ask why she was not listed among the closest disciples Jesus commanded to take the gospel to the world. But that is a topic for another episode. Watch out for it. In this episode, we are going to look at the two secrets that Jesus shared with only Mary Magdalene. Why would Jesus reveal something to Mary Magdalene and not to his trusted disciples? What is it about this woman that made her an exclusive recipient of divine revelation withheld from the twelve disciples? Mary Magdalene is a much more prominent figure than she is given credit for. In terms of appearance in the scripture, for example, Mary Magdalene features more than many of the other disciples of Jesus Christ. Her name appears more than Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Bartholomew, Thaddeus, and Simon the Zealot. That's more than a good number of Jesus' disciples. Why is this significant? Because name and naming matters in the scripture. A careful reading of the scriptures shows that being named is important. Naming is tied to relevance and recognition. Historical data and research has made it clear that Mary Magdalene financially supported Jesus. As Luke tells us, the twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out, Joanna, the wife of Cusa, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support the ministry of Jesus out of their own means. Luke chapter 8 verses 1 to 3. Mary Magdalene was with Jesus till the very end. The Gospel of John specifically names Mary Magdalene as one of the women who stood near the cross during the crucifixion of Jesus. After Jesus' crucifixion, Mary Magdalene was present when Jesus was laid to rest. Furthermore, after the death and burial of Jesus, it was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary who went to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body with spices and perfumes on the day we now know as Easter Sunday. Perhaps, one of the most profound action of Mary Magdalene is the anointing of Jesus Christ at Bethany. As the Bible reports, while Jesus was in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. When the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste? They asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. When Jesus heard this, he said to them, Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. Matthew 26 verses 6 to 12. Jesus' statement suggests his knowledge that Mary may be aware of what was really happening at a deeper level than the other disciples. The word Christ means the anointed one. How can we then doubt that the woman who undertook the rite of anointment for Jesus, a premonition of his impeding burial, cannot be privy to secrets others did not know. Mary Magdalene's anointing of Jesus highlights her priestly and midwifery role in Jesus' transition through death. That is why Jesus forever acknowledged her by saying to the disciples, Verily I say unto you, 
Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also be this that this woman hath done, be told for a memorial of her. Matthew 26 verse 13 The most poignant of Mary Magdalene's role in the life of Jesus happened on the third day after the death of Jesus. This encounter is described in the Gospel of John, John 20 verses 1 to 18. Mary Magdalene is described as going to the tomb of Jesus on the morning of the first day of the week, Easter Sunday. She goes to the tomb to anoint the body of Christ while it is still dark, but finds the stone rolled away from the entrance. She looked in and found the tomb empty. Mary Magdalene runs to tell Peter and John that Jesus' body is missing. Peter and the other disciple rush to the tomb and find it empty, as Mary had said. What happens next always blows my mind. While the other disciples left, for whatever reason, Mary Magdalene could not leave. She stayed at the tomb weeping. It was in her deep sorrow that she encountered two angels inside the tomb who asked her why she was weeping. She explained her distress about the missing body of Jesus. But when she turned around, that's when she saw Jesus. But at first, she mistook him for someone else. She did not recognize him. Then Jesus speaks to Mary Magdalene and asks her why she is weeping and whom she is looking for. It is at this point that she recognizes him. She then wipes her face and addresses him as Rabboni, which means teacher in Aramaic. Beloved, as I write down these words, just thinking about this encounter brings tears of joy to my eyes. If you feel the impact of these words as much as I do, you will never be the same. Nevertheless, Jesus instructs Mary Magdalene to go and tell the other disciples that he is ascending to his father and their father, his God and their God. That is how Mary Magdalene became the Apostle of Apostles. Before we continue, let's remember why Mary Magdalene went to the tomb in the first place. She was there to anoint the body of Jesus, who had been buried for three days. Think about that for a second. Mary Magdalene, who was not the wife of Jesus. She was not his mother, nor was she his biological sister. Yet, she was going to perform such intimate rites as washing his body after death. Who is this woman? <laughs> Now you can see why it may not have been so strange that Jesus would reveal certain secret to such a person. Which brings us to the core of this video. What secret did Jesus reveal exclusively to Mary Magdalene? The secret centers on the unique teachings or interactions between Jesus and Mary Magdalene, many of which could not be included when the canonical Bible was compiled by Emperor Constantine and the Council of Nicaea, in the year 325 AD. The first secret is the medium of vision. How do we see vision? The power and importance of vision is paramount in Christianity. Vision, in addition to audition, that is, hearing from God, is the primary means by which God interface with us. Think of Abraham, Sarah, Joseph, Moses, and all the prophets and judges of the Old Testament. They all had visions. Paul had a visionary encounter with Jesus on his way to persecute Christians in Damascus. Peter saw animals descending from heaven when God wanted to accept the Gentiles. What about John? The book of Revelation is mostly a product of vision. The angel that announced the impending conception of Jesus Christ to the Virgin Mary appeared as a vision. So we know that vision is fundamental to the reconciling of the temporal to the divine. But how does vision happen? That is the first secret that was revealed to the world through Mary Magdalene. This revelation is described in the Gospel of Mary, a non-canonical gospel, as follows. When Simon Peter said to Mary, Tell us those words of the Savior which you know, but which we haven't heard, Mary Magdalene answered and said, What is hidden from you I will proclaim to you. And she began to speak to them these words, I she said, I saw the Lord in a vision, and I said to him, Lord, I saw you today in a vision. He answered and said to me, Blessed are you, 
that you did not waver at the sight of me. For where the mind is, there is the treasure. I said to him, Lord, how does he who sees the vision see it, through the soul or through the spirit? The Savior answered and said, He does not see through the soul nor through the spirit, but the mind that is between the two, that is what sees the vision. Gospel of Mary 5 verse 11 But the mind that is between the two, that is what sees the vision. To better understand the importance of this revelation, let us make a distinction between the mind, soul, and spirit. The mind, or nu, represents the highest aspect of human consciousness. It is often associated with intellect, reason, and higher knowledge. The mind is the faculty that has the capacity to perceive and understand spiritual truths and visions. It acts as an intermediary between the soul and the divine realm. It is the faculty that comprehends the higher knowledge contained in the vision. The soul, on the other hand, often referred to as the psyche, is an intermediate aspect of human consciousness. It is the seat of emotions, desires, and individuality. The soul is on a journey of spiritual ascent, seeking to overcome the material world and unite with the divine. The soul may have experiences and visions guided by the mind's higher knowledge. The spirit, or pneuma, is the innermost aspect of the human being. It is the divine spark or essence within each individual that is connected to the ultimate source of divinity. The spirit seeks to return to its divine origin, and the mind and soul play roles in facilitating this return. Jesus' revelation to Mary means that it is the mind, nous, that perceives and comprehends the spiritual vision. It acts as the intermediary that allows the soul to access higher knowledge and insight. The properly cultivated mind is a higher intellectual faculty that helps individuals understand and interpret their spiritual experiences. That is why the mind is often the first target of Satan. In any case, you must know that visions from God are live and distinct, accessible through the point between the soul and the spirit. They are not hallucinations or daydreaming. They are real. Now to the second secret. The second secret is about the ascent of the soul and the path to spiritual enlightenment. Jesus revealed the secret of the journey of the soul to Mary Magdalene. How did we know this? Because she told Peter when he asked. When Peter said to Mary, Tell us those words of the Savior which you know, but which we haven't heard. Mary stepped forward and she said, I will report to you as much as I remember that is unknown to you. Gospel of Mary 8 verses 10 to 24. She described the journey of the soul to the divine as having multiple levels. The soul must overcome and pass through such levels as attachment, ignorance, judgment, wisdom of the flesh, desire, fear of death, and wrath, or loss of self-control. The secret Jesus shared with us through Mary Magdalene is that any soul that wants to reach the divine must overcome these obstacles. According to Mary, in the end, a triumphant soul would say, What binds me has been slain, and what turns me about has been overcome, and my desire has been ended, and ignorance has died. I hope you enjoyed and learned from this episode. Please subscribe to our channel, like, and share this video. It will help us take this message further. I will love to know what you think of Mary Magdalene and her role in the early days of Christianity. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Amen.